Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Everything Possible in Dark Souls 1. Let's go ahead and get started without delay. Well, so here we are with Andre, and we're finally going to purchase a few items from him. First and foremost, the Crest of Artorias. We're going to buy the weapon and the armor smith box, and then we're going to go and explore the Darkroot Garden. We had to buy the Crest of Artorias if we wanted to take the main entrance into Darkroot Garden. However, as we saw going from Darkroot Basin, you can actually access the garden without buying that Crest of Artorias. It is a little bit more tedious, however. Now, before we take the usual look at our gear and our stats, let's actually take a look at our upgrade materials because I did some farming down in Blighttown. And you can see I have a massive amount of green titanite shards and a healthy amount of large titanite shards as well. So farming those slugs is absolutely worth your while. My equipment really hasn't changed any, pretty standard, but if you take a look at our stats, we have leveled up some. I am now level 54, and the most notable adjustment is that my intelligence is now at 14 because there are a couple of spells we're going to be using later on that do require 14 intelligence. Now, moving right along into the garden, we're going to fight a number of these demonic trees or demonic shrubs, whatever you want to call them, and they have a very high drop rate of the moss clumps even without 10 humanity or the covetous gold serpent ring. So I'm not actually going to call out every moss clump that I pick up. We took that pathway in order to go fight the Titanite Demon a few episodes ago. And coming in here, we have our first ambush. You can actually see the tops of these enemies sticking out like little plants, but if you know what to look for, you can identify these traps beforehand, and you can actually get the drop on them. That item right there we will be picking up in this episode, but it will be down the line. And that bridge is actually the arena for our next boss. And this butterfly clinging to that tower, that is our next boss. Funny thing is that is actually the first time I've ever noticed you can see the butterfly from down here. Pick up a large soul of a nameless soldier behind this rock. And then as we get near the end of this line, we have a door with a glowing symbol in the middle of it. That is where we'll use a crest of Artorias, not quite yet. There's a path to the right, and there's also this suspicious looking gateway that you can roll or attack through because it's an illusory wall. And this is the only bonfire in Darkroot Garden, so you're going to want to pick it up. Because we have more than 10 humanity, we're going to feel comfortable with kindling this bonfire, so we constantly have 10 SS flasks at our disposal. And now, just to show you, we do have the option to reinforce our armor and reinforce our weapons, because we bought those smith boxes. Keep in mind, you cannot ascend weapons or armor, you can only upgrade them like you would do normally at a blacksmith. Now this is a trap. You probably already guessed it. But since we can see the tops of these enemies, no big deal. Cut them down in their prime. And then we can pick up our reward, a large soul of the name of Soldier. And a few moss clumps. If you decide to avoid this trap, they will not even jump up. So you can go ahead and avoid that soul if you wish and avoid that fight altogether. But really is free souls. This is not a boss fog gate, so you don't have to worry about that. And what we're going to do is first we're going to take this right hand side and the first enemy we come across is this stone giant knight. And I'm not going to attack him right away because I wanted to show you this AoE that they can use. And this is a spell known as Tranquil Walk of Peace. That was my attempt at rolling. Tranquil Walk of Peace will increase your burden by about 50%. So anything other than the lightest of builds are going to have a hard time moving at any speed faster than a walk and rolling can become difficult if not impossible. Now these enemies can drop their stone great shield and their stone great sword. They're somewhat rare drop, however during all my practice runs I got both and in this run I didn't get either, so sorry I couldn't show you that. And here we have another trap, but I'm sure you probably could have guessed that as well because if you see a shiny surrounded by what look to be corpses of your enemies, they're not corpses. So before we pick that up, we do want to dispatch of all of the ambushers. We'll go after the trees first, because they have a very long range with their attacks. And surprisingly, even though they're wearing one of the highest defense armors in the game, the Stone Giant Knights really go down pretty easily. And now we have the Elite Knight armor set. Now the Elite Knight armor set is worn by two notable NPCs. One is Oscar of Astora, and the other one is Undead Prince Ricard, who we fought in Sen's Fortress. 
Interestingly enough, if you read the description, it actually mentions that this armor belonged to a nameless knight who actually perished at the Undead Asylum and then he went hollow. Now, other than the fact that the description says he's nameless, that to me sounds exactly like Oscar Vistora. What his armor would be doing here in Darkroot Garden, I couldn't tell you. Now with the giant's dead, we're going to head back to the entrance of the garden. You can see the top of another one of the demonic trees. Take him down. He isn't ambushed because if you follow this path to go get the item at the end, he will spring up behind you. But before we get that, we have kind of an ambush. If you can notice on the tree, he does blend in a little bit. We have a tree lizard here, and he will attack you if you try to pick up this partisan without killing him first. Now there's one more tree lizard in this area, and if you're looking for an egg vermifuge, which can cure the egg parasite that you would get from the egg carriers down in Quelag's domain, or you can trade it to Snuggly for a dragon scale, these are the only two enemies that will drop them. You can, however, buy them later on if you become infected with one of the egg carriers. But that is it for this area, so with all the enemies clear, we're going to take a look at this tower. This will lead us up to the Moonlight Butterfly fight. However, Something seems suspicious about this bush, and sure enough, underneath we have a summon sign for Witch Beatrice, who we are going to use for this fight. In fact, much like Iron Tarkus, you can actually leave this fight to Witch Beatrice, and she will take care of it for you. It could take a little bit longer than the Iron Golem fight, but she'll get the job done. So we're going to lead her up, and we'll show you the fight. It's one of the simpler boss fights in Dark Souls, even if you don't use her as long as you can either block the magic projectiles or dodge out of the way, which is a bit easier, then you can just wait for the butterfly to land. Well, you'll see. And now we can see the butterfly leaving her perch. She's gonna fly down and take notice of the horn on top of her head, because that is an item that you can actually get, or a weapon rather, that you can make using her soul. We'll talk about her soul once we pick it up. Now those projectiles are a little bit harder to dodge only because they come so fast, but that slow moving projectile is very easily rolled through or away. Now you can see that the damage that's already been done to the butterfly, that has been done in only two hits from Witch Beatrice. Occasionally the butterfly will switch sides. If you're having trouble, with dodging the attacks, that gateway that has the fog wall currently, you can hide behind there and you can effectively dodge all of the attacks. But as soon as the butterfly lands, then it's time to go nuts. If you don't actually kill the butterfly very quickly while it lands, it will produce an AoE explosion that will do significant damage. But now we have the soul of a moonlight butterfly and we also get a humanity. And the soul of the Moonlight Butterfly can become one of two things. You can turn it into a Crystal Ring Shield if you combine it with a plus 10 shield. This will actually give you a magic projectile attack with the parry animation. Or you can create the Moonlight Butterfly Horn, combining it with a plus 10 spear or a thrusting sword. All of these boss weapons that we're discussing can be made at the Giant Blacksmith in Anor Lundo. But at the top of this tower, we have this Petrified Blacksmith. And he is holding on to three things. The Watchtower Basement Key, which will give us access to Havel. Divine Ember, which will give us access to make divine weapons with Andre and a Homeward Bone. Now before we leave, I found something very, very interesting in this location. And I found it accidentally during one of my practice runs. If you smash this bucket, physics seem to go out the window. I don't really understand what's happening here, but I've done it now three times, so it is repeatable. And you can actually even get the anvil to do it as well, but not this time. But the pieces of the bucket will slowly slide towards the edge, drop down until they hit another plane, and then they'll actually just phase right through the wall. Go figure. So back at the bonfire in Darkroot Garden, we're now going to head down the same path, but this time we're going to head right instead of going straight. But because we actually defeated these demonic trees earlier, they are now awake, so they are going to pursue us. So we'll go ahead and deal with them instead of letting them follow us for too far. By the way, they do have an impressively far aggro range. Their leashing will not kick into effect until much, much further. So better to take care of them now. 
Grab ourselves some more clumps. Even get a blooming purple moss clump, which is always nice. Not that there's too many more areas where we might actually get the toxic effect. But you can see this tree kind of wiggling its roots a little bit. It looks a little out of place. And as soon as you start attacking it, it actually has an HP bar. Now these enemies, before the content was actually cut, actually did have a devastating attack. I'm kind of glad they took it out. But an interesting way to hide a secret area. And now we have an enemy that the wiki calls the Frog Ray, and you can kind of see why. The eyes and the legs kind of look like a frog, but then it has these wings like a ray, so Frog Ray seems to fit. But these Frog Rays are an excellent source of Green Blossoms, an item we actually haven't picked up yet, even though we did see that they were sold by the Crestfallen Merchant in Sense Fortress. But if you're looking to farm it and not actually pay any money for them, these are the enemies to farm them from. Now, just to forewarn you, they have ragdoll physics just like the demonic trees and the slugs down of Light Town, so carefully don't kick them off the edge. Pick up this soul of a proud knight that they were guarding, and now we can start picking up the green blossoms from their bodies. Looks like one of them actually already fell off the cliff. In fact, I'll go ahead and see you just how flimsy they are. There they go. And at the base of this ruin, we have another stone giant. You can start attacking right before they're fully stood up. When their knees are still slightly bent, you can start your attack and they will take damage. And with my plus 10 claymore, two two-handed swings is all it takes. Running up this path, we are actually going to find that item that we saw on a ledge at the beginning of the video. But first, we do have one more stone giant to deal with. So now you've actually seen all of the stone giants in Darkroot Garden, so if you're looking to farm the Great Shield and the Great Sword, you can actually devise a pretty efficient path. But the item is a very valuable ring known as the Wolf Ring. The Wolf Ring will improve your poise by 40 points. If you're wondering what poise is, poise is a resistance to staggering or stun locking. So if you're having an issue being knocked out of your attack or your healing animation, you may want to look into increasing your poise, and the wolf ring is one of the easiest ways to do so. I'm showing you right now just how you can increase it by 40 points. I went from 5 to 45. Also, if you've never seen the onion shuffle, which demonstrates poise at its best, I'll go ahead and put a link to that video in the description. Please, please go watch it, and you can thank me later. And don't forget to comment and let the content creator know that Blue says hi. Hint, I didn't make the video. But it's phenomenal. So now we have completed that side section of Darkroot Garden. So now we're actually going to go into the main section by using the Crest of Artorias. Now if you are playing online, and you are human, this can be a very troublesome area if you are not looking to PvP. While you are in this garden, you are susceptible to invasions from members of the Forest Covenant. And they happen rapidly, and they can happen multiples at a time. So, if you do not want to be invaded, you may want to be hollow, or you may want to play offline. But just kind of showing you some of the different enemies in this area, one is already aggroed. And I'm going to show you two very easy ways of dealing with them. The first is, we're going to run around and aggro as many of them as we can, because we're actually going to take them on all at the same time. Sort of. Get the attention of that bandit up here. Got him. We have the mace-wielding guy there. And now we have this transparent thief. Now some of the enemies in here will be using the Ring of Fog, which makes them somewhat transparent. And if you're looking to get the Ring of Fog, then you're going to want to join this covenant and reach three kills as a forest hunter. But now that we have many of them in tow, we're going to run into this corner next to the stairs. And then we're just going to stand here and shield. hey -oh! Bye! And goodbye. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get them all, but that's okay. We still have this sorcerer to deal with. 
who decides that he's going to drop down just after I moved, but we can deal with him. This is taking advantage of the enemy pathing in the worst way. But if he decides to roll off to his own death, who am I to stop him? So now we're going to be a little bit careful because we know that there's still a couple of them out there. And there's one straight ahead. And this enemy's AI bugs out. I don't know if it's because of this rock or what, but no matter what I do, he actually doesn't attack. He doesn't even try to run away anymore. Never seen this happen with one of these enemies. But I appreciate it nonetheless. One more down. Now we're going to skirt around kind of the edge of this cliff here. We do have two more. We have this knight that we have to deal with, but we also have this hunter. And the hunter is the only one in this group that actually has a drop. A drop that we do want to pick up. I want to pick up all the drops. Why do I ever say that I want to pick up this drop? I'm going to. It's, it's a given. It's the entire nature of this series. Now these are still true enemies. These are living, quote unquote, living enemies. They're not ghosts. They're not some sort of apparition. They're transparent because of the Ring of Fog. And as such, you can still parry and repost, and you also can get the backstab, as I just demonstrated. So with the knight down, just one more to deal with. And this is the hunter, and very likely this hunter's name is Ferris. And you're going to see why we believe that in just a moment. Well, in a few moments. This fight took me longer than I care to admit. However, I'm going to have to admit it since you're watching the video. But, if you decide to skip ahead to the end of the kill, then I can pretend it didn't take nearly as long as it did. So, you go ahead and do that. Just skip right along. Seriously, skip right along. Also, if Ferris rolls off the edge, or if you kick Ferris off the ledge, you can just quit and reload, and the drops will be where Ferris spawned. So don't think that you lost the drops just because of that. And yes, Ferris is a man based on the description of the items, and this is clearly a woman, but Dark Souls. Now because it is a forest, we're going to go ahead and use the trees to our advantage. Because had we not healed, we very well could have died. The fight is almost over. Oh, I don't know what that tree ever did to Ferris, but okay. Was worried about the backstab. And then, there it is. And with Ferris down, we will pick up Twin Humanities, the Black Bow of Ferris, and Ferris's hat. Hence why we believe this is Ferris. Now the Black Bow of Ferris, it does have the best range of any bow or any non-great bow in the game. However, the damage is only average. So it's really only recommended for a very high dexterity build because it does have S scaling and dexterity from the get-go. Not gecko, the get-go. So I used a homeward bone to get back because now I'm going to show you the even easier method of dealing with these enemies. And it's just that you don't kill them. Instead, you run past them all, you go into this archway, and you talk to Alvina. And as soon as you talk to Alvina and you join the Forest Covenant, these enemies are not your enemies anymore. In fact, they are your brother. So we're going to join the Covenant. I did previously leave the Way of the White by talking to Oswald of Kareem in the Undead Parish. So no sinning there. And now we get the Cat Covenant Ring. The Cat Covenant Ring, when you're wearing this ring and you're a member of the Cat Covenant, you can be summoned to fight an invader or someone entering the garden from almost anywhere else in the game. And again, if you're looking for that Ring of Fog, you need to kill three of those hosts in order to get that ring. I've heard all about you. Now this is That's Shiva true. of the East. Except Shiva is wearing the Eastern true. armor set, something That's we're going to pick up momentarily. Great. Shiva right now doesn't have much to say, but you Don't do you want to exhaust his dialogue because later on he will move to Blight Town and become a merchant, and a merchant who sells some pretty rare equipment. So we've talked to Shiva, and now we are going to see him later on in Blight Town, not in this episode. But when we're in Blight Town, we'll buy anything we want, but then. We're probably going to do the unthinkable and kill him and his bodyguard, one of the transparent ring of fog wares you may or may not have seen behind him, because from his bodyguard, we can actually get the dark wood grain ring. 
dark wood grain ring, also known as the Ninja Flip Ring. So, sit tight because that episode will be coming later. You can see the shiny over there on the cliff, amongst that absolutely spectacular view, but there are quite a few of these demonic tree enemies that we're going to have to deal with first. So if you're looking to farm clumps, you could do worse. However, I will also point out, notice that it's taking me two one-handed attacks in order to kill them. These enemies do have higher HP than the ones we saw earlier in the garden. And, if you notice, when they do actually attack you, their attacks are no joke. Also, I rolled away from that thinking that was a grab attack because the grab attack will go over your shield and cause massive, massive damage. There's the grab attack I was trying to avoid. And there it is again. Almost all done. Now, if you happen to have any charcoal, pine resin, or if you have any weapon that has fire damage, these enemies, being that they're plants, are weak to fire. If you've ever played Dragon's Dogma and you had a pawn with you, you've probably heard the line, It's weak to fire! So many times you wanted to puke. While well, these enemies are weak to fire! Anyway, we're not playing Dragon's Dogma currently, but we did get the Eastern Armor set. The same exact set that Shiva's wearing. Nothing really overly special about it. It's a decent armor set. I think it's pretty cool looking, but other than that, no special traits or hidden item descriptions. We're traversing the edge of the cliff now and kill a couple more of these trees. Because if you don't stay too close to the edge, then you may miss another path. Oh, don't forget to get your clumps blue. No, oh, you love the clumps. Not the Nutty Professor to the clump because that was an abomination of a movie. But these clumps, the moss clumps, two very different things. Continuing right along, moving on from the Nutty Professor 2, how did that even happen? Anyway, here's this small path down here, and you can see kind of a bridge down in the lower left, and we see a bridge up top here, but there's a ladder that will head down to the lower area. We're not gonna take the ladder yet, and even though you can't see it, there is a shiny down there on the ledge. Unfortunately, the draw distance is just a bit too far. But if you come this way, and you walk up this ramp, we are going to fight three enemies that are unique to this area. Also enemies that could provide a quick and painful death if you're not careful. but we're gonna get one's attention and then hide down in between these two trees because there is some collision detection that will help us in order to fight these cats or great felines as they're called. So once they start coming down that ramp, you'll notice that they get stuck and they have to start backing up. So we're gonna use that to our advantage, keep luring them in one at a time or as much as we can one at a time. Even though they backtrack, they're still aggroed, and you have to watch this rolling attack. It is very, very damaging and typically will go through most shields. But with a two-handed claymore attack, I can actually stun them in a single hit, which means that I can stun lock them, but it's a little bit dangerous to do so unless I'm only fighting one. Yes, I know it was only fighting one, but the other ones could have dropped down at any time. With that one dead, we do have two more to deal with. Both of them are now aggroed. So we're going to use the same tactic. Just get back when they start attacking down this ramp. You can see there, there's a two-hit stun lock. Three-hit stun lock. And I could have kept going, but I wasn't sure where the other cat was. Turns out, I should have been paying more attention. But that's all right. Going to top off our health, reset, and try it again. Okay, doing the roll, going for the attack, see if I can get another, yes I can, and one more will finish it, there it is. They also do have a grab attack that is pretty well telegraphed, but it will also go over your shield and it does a lot of damage. It is not an instant kill, but if you don't have very high HP, then 
Well, it could be an instant kill. And I guess that is kind of an obvious statement. If you have low HP, many things can be an instant kill. If you have low enough HP, a punch or a push from a dregling could be an instant kill. Good job, Blue. I think you clarified that. They were guarding a large soul of a brave warrior. So if you're not looking for that soul, you can skip this area altogether because I'll show you where this area is connecting. Going to stick to the left side of this cliff. You can see some enemies or some things off in the distance on the right hand side. Some mushroom looking guys. And that's exactly what they are. Those are mushrooms. Those are mushrooms that will devastate you if you let them. Devastate you in two ways. Number one, if you kill their little babies, or their babbies, if you will, they will let out one of the saddest cries you've ever heard. Well, unless you've heard a loon cry, because a loon actually calls much in the same way as those babbies do. But they'll also devastate you if you actually allow yourself to take a hit from one of the large mushrooms, which I'll show you. But if we come into this ruin, we'll climb the stairs, first we get stuck under them briefly, very important, and cross this bridge, we can see Alvina on the right. So this is the connection. So you can kind of piece that together in your mind. You and drop down for a quick shortcut. And then around the back side of these ruins, inside this chest, you can pick up the stone armor set. So this is the so this is the same armor set that the stone giant knights are wearing. And as far as armor goes, this is one of the best defense armor sets that you can get in this half of the game. However, keep in mind it weighs a ton. Not a metric ton, but it does weigh 45.2 weight units, which is pretty considerable, considering for us that would be nearly two-thirds. I know, I'm a monster. I get it. But you know what? We're about to do something much worse than killing these loon-sounding baby mushrooms, so get over it. But just to show you what happens if you do hit it and then you let it live, it's adorable. It runs to its parents. That's so cute. <clears throat> That's so cute and manly. <clears throat> but anyway, once you have the attention of the big ones, this is when things get interesting. Because they, quite literally, pack a punch. So I try to show you just how much stamina reduction it takes to block one of their hits. But unfortunately, I found out that when they do this haymaker type punch, shields apparently are not affected, or at least this size shield. It's possible that maybe a great shield would block that, but for the shield that I'm using, really did absolutely nothing. But you saw the damage that that took away from me. So be very careful. Now they do have very slow attacks, but they do have a one-two combo that you may or may not see coming. What I find easiest is to go ahead, get a single hit in, to back up, to get out of the range of the hit, and then to go in for another hit, rinse and repeat. And there's that one-two combo. But they have a very common drop of gold pine resin. In fact, this time we actually got two. So, if you're looking to farm them, these are the only enemies that will actually drop the gold pine resin. There are a couple of merchants who will sell them in limited quantities, but they sell them at 1,200 souls apiece. So, if you're looking to farm, the forest is a great place to do so for a number of items, including the gold pine resin. Now, these small babby mushrooms can drop the gold pine resin, but the drop rate is much less. Although, I say that, and then one drops on one of the babby mushrooms. Go figure. Rinse and repeat for this mushroom. And the item that they're guarding is something that not everyone is going to have a need for, so again, if you don't need it, go ahead and bypass them. The babbies are non-hostile, and the adults have a very short aggro range anyway. So we got a couple more gold pine resin, and now inside this wooden chest that they are guarding, we get the enchanted ember. This ember, when given to Rickert, who we actually haven't seen yet, but he is in the New Londo ruins, that can turn a plus five magic weapon into an enchanted weapon. This is one of the best upgrade paths you can choose if you're going for a high intelligent build. But with the dark root garden behind us, we're about to cross this bridge into territory that really no man should tread. Then again, unless you're playing Dark Souls and you actually want to beat the game, then you have to. But through this door lies one of the most memorable and depressing encounters of any Souls game to date. 
So we're going to go ahead and push this very heavy set of doors open. And inside, what could be described none other than a boss arena. And looking straight ahead, you can see a tombstone with a very large sword sticking out of it. A whole lot of other numerous swords and weapons sticking out of the ground in front of it, indicating that people have not fared so well here. But before we go and approach that grave, we're going to go around the back side. Because you can actually pick up the Hornet Ring without encountering the boss. And the Hornet Ring will give you an extra 30% to your critical attacks. Critical attacks being backstab and repost. Now technically, according to wikis and according to player experience, plunging attacks are also considered critical attacks. But the Hornet Ring will not boost that damage. So if you're into pairing, reposting, and getting backstabs, this is a ring that you're going to want to have equipped most often. had to be quiet during that cutscene. So that cutscene was the opening to the fight with the Great Grey Wolf Sif. So I'm going to actually talk about a few other aspects of Sif without actually commenting on the fight itself. The fight itself is pretty straightforward. You can learn his attacks pretty easily. Many of them can be rolled through. All of them can be blocked. But I still get careless and make a few mistakes. But anyway, the opening of that fight is one that kind of invokes what Sif is really here for. He is guarding the grave of his former master, Sir Knight Artorius. And for us to come and even take a look at the grave to get that close is infringing on his master's well-being and his rest. So Sif is going to do everything he can, everything in his power, to stop us from getting any closer. However, we're going to see that opening again later on after we fought the DLC. I'm going to show that opening again on another character because they did alter it slightly if you fulfilled a couple of requirements that you can only do so in the DLC. Believe me when I say, if you think this fight tugs at your heartstrings now, just wait until you see that opening if you haven't done so already. Now there's another part of this fight that is really going to be quite sad, but we're going to see that when his health bar gets almost depleted completely. Don't worry, I won't make it last very long. The music is just so fitting for this fight. Just reverence is the word that comes to mind when I hear this music. When I see Sif and when I fight Sif, the reason that I find it sad, and no, I don't actually get weepy and teary-eyed, but I can understand if you do, I truly don't believe he wants to hurt us. I don't think he wants to kill us. In fact, once you see the alternate scene later on, you're really going to believe he doesn't want to do this. But he has to. It's what he was born to do. He was with Sir Knight Artorius since he was a little puppy, and the fact that Knight Artorius is now buried in the ground doesn't mean that Sif can just give up on his master. He is going to spend the rest of his life guarding it from any intruders, and at this point, we are that intruder. So if at any point you thought maybe your character wasn't quite the hero you expected, and maybe he was more along the lines of an anti-hero, this might solidify that idea. But I'm going to go ahead and be quiet for the rest of the fight, or at least until the next phase happens. And you guys can just enjoy this absolutely beautifully well done fight. Here we are. Once you do enough damage to Sif, he is actually going to start limping. 
And even while he's limping, he is still going to do everything in his power in order to protect his master's honor. Now, if you don't let him get a couple of hits on you, then you're the monster here. He's trying his hardest. But I also recommend putting him out of his misery as fast as you can, because it's just too sad. With Sif dead, we do get the Covenant of Artorias, the soul of Sif, humanity, and a homeward bone. And I didn't mean to wave there. That felt disrespectful. I meant to bow. That was stupid of me. Anyway, the Covenant of Artorias is a ring that will allow us to traverse the abyss and fight the four kings much like his master Knight Artorias did. The Soul of Sif, this is one of the boss souls that you will need three of if you're trying to get all of the boss weapons. You can tr you can create the Great Sword of Artorias by combining a plus 10 Broken Straight Sword or a plus 10 Straight Sword Hilt with his soul. You can get the Cursed Great Sword of Artorias by combining a plus 10 Dagger, Great Sword, or Straight Sword with this soul. Or you can get the Great Shield of Artorias by combining a plus 10 Shield with this soul. Each of those items has very incredible stats on it, and they have unique abilities. I definitely recommend you check them out. But if you're looking for all those items, and you're not going to allow people to drop that soul for you, you will be playing through this game three times in order to get them all. You can see where we are now. We finally took that ladder down further into Darkroot Basin, or nearly in Darkroot Basin, and we got ourselves a soul of a brave warrior. Now I am going to speed up the video again, because by now you should recognize where we are. Right down in that lake is where we fought the Hydra, and this is that obnoxiously long ladder that, thank God, we avoided climbing up. Now we can just slide down, we're going to take out some of the golems. Well, we're going to take out all the golems. And I don't have the rusted iron ring equipped, so that water takes obnoxiously long time to get through. Two more golems to go down. And then we're going to head up to the watchtower we saw before but was locked, but now that we have the watchtower basement key that we got after fighting the Moonlight Butterfly, we can finally take on Havel the Rock, or Havel the Rock. I actually go back and forth now that I think about it. And you can actually see he wanted to see who was at the door. But now he's shy. Oh, <laughs> look at him. Adorable. This guy can wreck even the highest of players. Now his shots won't one-shot you in most situations, but they can. So you want to be careful with how you're actually going to approach this, but he is very susceptible to backstabs, and as you'll see in just a moment, he is also susceptible to parrying, if you're brave enough to try it. I was really clenched for this. Oh, I really was. In my seat, my palms were sweaty. I was, I was shaking in my boots. But that is Havel the Rock. Probably. I say probably because we're going to look at the item description in just a minute. But Havel's ring will give you an increased item burden of 50%. So, if I were to put this on right now, I could actually be fast rolling despite how much equipment I have on at the time. Havel's men wore the ring to express their fate. Havel's men. It didn't actually say that Havel wore this ring. There is a theory out there that this is not the true Havel the Rock and this is only one of his servants probably a member of the Way of White, because Havel was a bishop, likely in that covenant. So, you can believe it's Havel, you can believe it's a servant of Havel. Either way is totally fine. I believe that there's evidence for both theories. I tend to think that that is the true Havel, or at least I want to believe it. But now you can see where we are at. We are back in the Undead Burg. And that is going to wrap up this episode. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, leave me a comment and let me know what you learned. If I missed something, make sure you leave that as well. And I will catch you next time where we will be most likely exploring the catacombs.